As the world ended with fire and sword, and one by one the lights of civilization were snuffed out, old ideas died. But from their ashes, new ideas came. Ideas that would change the world. As we've talked about the Bronze Age collapse, we've mentioned time and again that, across much of the ancient world, as civilizations fell apart, writing died out. Literacy disappeared. In many places, the written word simply vanished for centuries. But eventually, as humanity clawed its way back, this old idea of writing started to re-emerge, but in a new form. In our episode on the origins of writing, we talked about cuneiform, and how the first written scripts evolved from scribes making pictures to record the inventories of the vast temple warehouses of Sumer, and how, as part of that evolution, the pictures became simplified and lost their pictorial meaning, instead coming to mean the sound of the picture they originally represented. In doing so, cuneiform became a syllabic alphabet, where each cuneiform design represented a syllable of spoken speech. This rendered the character set smaller than pure pictographical systems, but it still left scribes with hundreds of characters to memorize. The more characters you have to memorize, the harder it is to become literate, the slower the adoption of the written word will be, and the smaller the group it'll be limited to. But the Sumerian system had influenced the way that writing in much of the ancient world developed, and so syllabic systems had become the norm. That is, until the collapse. So where does the story of the alphabet begin? A writing system based not on syllables, but on phonemes, on single sounds. Like many things, it begins in Egypt, before the collapse. The Egyptians actually had some single sound characters among their hieroglyphs. They weren't the majority of it, they weren't the most important part of it, but they were there, and migratory Semitic tribes coming to Egypt latched onto them, borrowing the sound characters to write in their own language, instead of trying to adopt the whole set of Egyptian hieroglyphs. As the world collapsed, this set of migratory tribes found themselves in a pretty good position. They didn't have any major infrastructure to topple, or intricate social order to upheave. And so, as the existing powers fell, they set up their own kingdoms in the Levant. One of these loosely tied kingdoms was Phoenicia. Sitting at the heart of everything, Phoenicia became a trade hub for a world slowly climbing out of the darkness. And with their trade came their language and their ideas. With their trade came their writing. But there's an interesting thing about trade, a weird quirk of necessity that leads us one step closer to what we think of as an alphabet. You see, cuneiform was based around making impressions in clay, the series of odd wedge marks that give the language its name. Clay made sense as the principal thing to write on when you were keeping track of vast stores of goods or making imperial records meant to stand the test of time. But clay is also pretty bulky, it's hard to transport, and so if your society is based on trade, you're gonna want something else to write on. The Phoenicians turned to papyrus. So now they had the single phoneme writing of the Semitic cultures, a new script that can be used on easily portable papyrus, and a vast trading network. This meant that they brought their writing with them, and other cultures began to pick it up and modify it to fit their languages. And one of the most enthusiastic adopters of this new system were the Greeks. With the utter destruction of the Mycenaean civilization, the Greeks really had lost their writing system. For the whole Dark Age that followed, Greek writing was just gone. But with the re-establishment of trade, the Greek city-states began to grow again. And as they did so, they latched onto this system that would clearly do so much to help their expansion. But up until this point, the Phoenician alphabet had mostly been used by Semitic-speaking peoples, and Semitic languages had an interesting oddity. They used almost no vowels. This meant that the Phoenicians never actually developed vowels for their alphabet. When vowel sounds were part of a word, they were just implied. Everybody could tell what the word was simply by writing all the consonants in it. Greek, though, is an Indo-European language. It is full of vowels. So the Greeks looked at the Phoenician alphabet and realized that there were a handful of consonants in there that they simply didn't use, letters that there simply wasn't an equivalent sound in Greek for. So, being simultaneously crafty and lazy, they just took those letters and started using them for Greek vowel sounds. And this is huge, because for the first time, every sound in a language was represented in its alphabet. There weren't a ton of additional things you needed to know from outside the written system to effectively use it, or that you would have to explain to a foreigner on top of it in order to teach them your writing. 
and the Greeks, being traders and seafarers in turn, spread this system westward, first to Italy, and then, if not always directly, to the rest of the European world. The system they spread is the basis for the alphabets that much of the world uses today. In fact, we are so rooted in it, I would ask you to take a moment to consider the Greek language with its newly minted vowels. What are the first two letters? Alpha and beta. And when you push those two together, what do you get? The very word we use to describe our system of written phonemes, alphabet. So while there are many other changes that this system eventually goes through, this is where we're going to stop today, because now we've got an alphabet. We've gotten the next major development in the history of writing, the thing that helps to spread literacy and makes adoption of the written word easy for many of the European cultures that had never had a writing system before. And a light emerges from the darkness of the Bronze Age collapse that will kindle the Western world. <laughs>